What's the biggest change or development that you've seen in the learning industry since you updated the book in 2010? I would say the other one was always kind of implicit, but Bob Keegan's new book, Deeply Developmental Organizations, is a good illustration. You might say the extension in depth. To really start to get more and more serious, what does it really mean to grow human beings? Um, I don't think that's a question any of us understand. I think we have an extremely limited notion of humanness. I think when you contrast, you know, the mainstream Western psychological perspectives of the last hundred years with a lot of the ancient, both indigenous and Eastern uh, philosophic cultivation systems, there's really big gaps, <laughs> you know. We really don't understand mind very well at all. Uh, it's interesting to see mindfulness now becoming a common, almost ah. term. Because people understand that, well, and first off, it's pretty important for healthy, happy people. But I'd say also there's a growing awakening that our understanding of consciousness is extremely limited. Uh, we, we live in this confusion that a human being is a body. And then, you know, that drives all of our business, to, you know, to make it pretty and to make it healthy and all that. And of course, those are very nice things, but that's actually not who we are. And at some, at some level, intuitively, everybody knows that. Right. Uh, and those are, you know, cornerstone ideas of, you might say, religious or spiritual traditions forever. In the West, it got very complicated because spirituality and religion got completely entangled. Mm. So you couldn't talk about these things except in a religious context. And I'm not s speaking against religion now, but it made it political, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is what institutions, including religious institutions, do. They, they create right. uh, dynamics of power. Mm. Uh, whereas those are timeless ideas. You know, the soul's journey is not a, a Western or even religious notion. It's a, it's a universal notion. It's, a, it's accepted and understood by countless traditions. And so this deepening and finding ways to go more deeply into this domain of human development, but to do it in secular terms, to do it in non-religious terms, to do it in terms that you can even relate to science, which mm -hmm. I think has been a, one of the big developments of of neuroscience in the last 20 or 30 years. People are now able to talk about, you know, aspects of our emotional state and our, our, our emotional well-being in ways that correlate with neural configurations. And I'm not saying that's like what everybody needs to understand, because none of us, many of us experience neural configurations, but it just illustrates there's a very, there's this wonderful ferment, east and west, not just in the West, but in the East as well. I, I spend about a month a year in China. Ah. And uh, I tell you, the thing that more people want to talk about than anything else is please help us understand how our traditional Chinese philosophies and, and practices of cultivation help, are relevant today. We're, we're, we're trying to rediscover who we are. Ah. Because there's, there's really no storehouse of cultural wisdom in the world that's greater than what the Chinese have, 5,000 years, some would say 10,000 years, of steady refinement of understanding of human development, but all completely lost in the last few hundred years um, of you know being overrun by the West, being colonized, then being caught up in the, tum the tumult of the Cultural Revolution, which was trying to expunge all that history so that the country could move forward for better or worse. And then, of course, being completely caught up in Western modernization and consumerism in the last two or three decades. So, as the Chinese say, we've had a few tough centuries. <laughs> but they have the benefit of a fairly long time perspective. So, for them, it's just a few tough centuries, but they have lost a lot. And I'm just using this to illustrate this kind of um, uh, unsettledness, this ferment to understand human development more deeply, I believe is one of the deepest uh, uh, dynamics occurring in the world today, East and West. And if they start to come together, it'll be very, very powerful. We'll realize that we really have a lot we could learn from each other. So those are the two things I see that's really different today, this extension in space and this deepening 